The good news, the BYU football program had their second scrimmage of spring ball. The bad news, you got to wait until after the intro to find out more. You are Locked On Cougars, your daily podcast on the BYU Cougars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? I'm Jake Hatch, your host here on Locked On Cougars, your resident BYU insider. Thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who are everydayers with us right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. The motto is your team every day, and as such, this is your original daily podcast. Focus on all things BYU sports, and we are brought to you today by our friends over at LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your business. That's why LinkedIn wants to help you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn dot com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. All right, let's dive right in on today's show. BYU football had their alumni weekend last weekend. I was privileged enough to go and sit and watch BYU film a two hour uh, round table involving members of the 1984 national championship team as 2024 is the 40 year anniversary of that uh, season. And then obviously they had the alumni game on Friday night. I met a handful of you out there at the event. So thank you to all of you, honestly, who uh, reached out and said hello. And it's always good to meet uh, Cougar fans out there in the quote unquote wild and Hope you guys had a great time at the alumni game. And then, obviously, BYU wrapped up the weekend on Saturday with a closed-door scrimmage. Well, as we are wont to do here on the podcast, we have our ways of finding out information about those scrimmages uh, that you won't find anywhere else. So, uh, let's just say this right off the top, is that BYU's defense, uh, compared to the first scrimmage of spring ball, BYU's defense had a better day on day two of their scrimmages. Now, scrimmages are an interesting dynamic, especially when it comes to spring, because Kalani Satake talked about it on Friday, that they were going to scrimmage on Saturday. And he said, we may hold some of our guys out who have already kind of established themselves or proven vets that type of stuff. So with the scrimmages in spring, they're more about the young players getting their chance to really show what they're capable of doing. And that's a big opportunity for a lot of young guys to take advantage of extra reps that may, they may not otherwise ever come by, especially when it's in season. When BYU gets into August, uh, the vast majority, 90 ish percent of the first team reps are going to go to the guys who are projected to be the starters at any given position. The other reps that are outside of that with the ones will go to their backups the guys who are expected to be in the two deep on the depth chart and then after that if there is an extra amount of reps those will be divvied out amongst the rest of the guys and it's just not a big opportunity to really show what you're capable of doing because there's so limited reps that is where this spring is so uh, particularly important for young players to go out and prove themselves. And the nice part for BYU during the spring camp is they've had a number of guys who have stepped up in multiple circumstances. Remember, early on in spring camp, uh, we were talking about Reiner Swanson, Ephraim, Asi- Ephraim Asiata at his day as well. So there have been a lot of young guys who have uh, stepped up. But the nice part is you're starting to see the entire team improve based on the conversations I had with people around the program is that BYU's defense had a better day in day two. So that meant that they learned from getting uh, run over in certain circumstances in day one. Kalani Satake said the offense owned the day uh, after the first scrimmage. Now, we didn't have media availability uh, for this scrimmage, but it sounds like the defense had a better day. Also, BYU's offensive line is continuing to show some positive signs. I know that's a, a, an interesting dynamic there because uh, the offensive line last year was a major, major weak point for BYU as a football program. It was a big, major weakness and a big reason why the BYU offense faltered as often as it did last year. But it sounds like there are positive signs. Caleb BTN continues to improve. I'm, I'm hearing very, very positive things about him, which is uh, something that I think there's music to a lot of y'all's he- ears is that you want to see this guy succeed. He's got all the measurables. He's all a six foot eight. He's all a 300 plus pounds and he moves relatively well for his size, but he's slimmed down and it appears that with the coaching, the team, TJ Woods has brought to the table him along with the rest of the offensive line for BYU have benefited to a large degree. The one thing I can say about TJ Woods based on everything I'm I've heard slash I know about him is he is a, a, a teacher first. 
He is getting in there and he's breaking this stuff down to the nitty gritty with this offensive line. Step here, hand placement there. Step this way, you have a double team, you do this and then you do that. He's, he breaks it down into very simple concepts. So these offensive linemen are getting extra, uh, I guess, attention in a way that they have not had for the better part of two plus years. Now, you can uh, quibble with that and say that why didn't uh, Kalani Satake or whoever else realize what was going on? It is what it is. Now they have TJ Woods in place and Connor's been on this podcast speaking of Connor Pay, and he has been very, very vocal in his support of what Coach Woods has brought to the table. But uh, more than that, the conversations I have with people who have watched these practices, they say that TJ Woods and even Kevin Gilbright as well, as the new tight ends coach, both of them are money well spent. I've heard that they have just been absolutely dynamic home run type hires for BYU on this offensive staff. They have fit in. They've been guys who have been very, very uh, – uh, engaged, I guess is the best way to say it, about going about their business the right way and making sure that the players in their respective meeting room, speaking of Coach Woods with the offensive line and then Coach Gilbride with the tight ends, they have uh, found a very, very nice groove that they're already operating in with these young men. Now, they have a lot of guys that are coaching up. The offensive line, you have five different positions at any given time on the field that you have to coach up for Coach Woods. And then Coach Gilbride, you can have as many as three tight ends on the field if certain uh, formations call for it. So they have a lot of responsibility, but it sounds like they have been the type of guys that Kalani Satake and Aaron Roderick and whoever else had uh, the overall say in their hire uh, they were very much uh, the guys that they expected them to be coming in. Now, the one other note I'll pass along is that the nice part also is from spring camp is that BYU, and Kalani Satake said this on the record on Friday, so I'm not revealing anything that he didn't say, is that this has been a very physical spring ball. There have been a number of guys who have gotten uh, injured, and injured is a relative term. There's guys who may miss a practice or two. There's guys who are going to miss the entirety of spring, but Kalani Satake said it himself. There are guys who have been injured in spring camp, but no season-ending injuries to this point, and that is a very, very positive thing to hear is that BYU has gotten about as physical as Kalani Satake has ever made spring ball. We have seen it with our own eyes when, when, when we've been out there with the media watching BYU practice, it's been a very, very hard hitting uh, type spring. And you run the risk, obviously, of guys uh, getting injured and being out for extended periods of time. But as Kalani said on Friday, when we talked to him at the alumni game, there are no guys who are out for the fall. There's no season ending injuries. So there's that kind of that fine line there. And yes, there are guys who are going to miss the rest of spring camp and have missed a significant time in spring. But it's been a camp that BYU, I think, will benefit from because they understand that it's some smash mouth type football you're going to have to play in the Big 12 Conference. And as Kalani often says, the only way to learn how to play that style of football is to practice that style of football. Uh, so it sounds like just, uh, I guess, my overall takeaway today is that in terms of specifics, uh, it sounds like there are some very, very positive signs for BYU as a team. The offense is getting uh, up on the defense one day, then the defense responds the next day. That's what you like to see. You don't want to see one side of the football dominate the other, and that that can lead to some major issues because then you're very concerned going in uh, to the summer months and obviously on into the fall camp, wondering, okay, can that other side of the football really respond. But uh, this last week, which is upcoming for BYU, we will have media availability uh, tomorrow, speaking of Tuesday, and then also on Saturday, the final media availability ahead of what I am expecting will be Big 12 Media Days down in Las Vegas in July. So uh, get ready. We're going to have some content for you guys. We'll have some final uh, reaction to spring camp as things wrap up. But this final week as well is very important for these players to put a lasting um mark in the mind of their coaches and make them think all summer long. Remember what that kid did is uh, for spring camp wrapped up. Well, maybe he's a guy we need to take a closer look at once fall camp opens up and it's a big, big opportunity. This final week is going to be full of it uh, for all of these BYU football players. All right, coming up here in just a minute, we're going to transition over. I've had about four of you ask me a question about Jackson Robin. It's a similar question that all of you have asked. We'll dig into uh, what exactly the circumstances are around Jackson Robinson, the BYU basketball team, as they now uh, head into the off season and uh, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but we'll talk about that as we roll on right here on Locked on Cougars. 
Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness bracket highlight is brought to our brought to you by our friends over at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out that's been head and shoulders above the rest, just like any of the all new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These teams are able to put take it to the next level. Let's talk about our friends, the Iowa State Cyclones, my friend. Remember BYU, Big 12 mates of the Cyclones. They can only be described as a pathfinder. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves entering the tournament as one of the hottest teams in the country and been making a run since then. We've got a big date with Illinois this Thursday in the Sweet 16. I'm looking forward to that. Obviously, a number of you out there, like myself, are going to be rooting on uh, for the Big 12 to make a run. So we'll be rooting on the Iowa State Cyclones as part of that. So take, take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or the Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure with our friends over at Nissan. My friends, they want to help you guys get out and enjoy whatever you like to do, no matter what it is, city or otherwise, uh, out in the great outdoors. They've got the options for you guys. Go to not go to go a shop nissanusa.com. That's nissanusa.com. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. Now, FanDuel has been with us for quite a while, my friends. The best part about FanDuel is all of us have had our bracket probably busted to a degree. Some of us, like myself, a little bit more busted than others, but they want to help you guys have uh, help you guys out by saying goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, my friends. Whether you're betting on a big upset or a one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers, you get $200 in bonus bets with your first $5 bet win. Simple as that. $200 in bonus bets if you your $5 bet wins. You can use that on points, spreads, money lines, even who's going to win it all uh, as the Sweet 16 is here, my friends. Take advantage of it and just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get started today and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you who have been everydayers with us here on the podcast. Uh, we love uh, talking all things BYU sports. want to remind you guys to check out the 24-7 free sports streaming channel called Locked On Sports Today. Get you all the news of the big stories of the day with all, without all the other screaming that seems to be going on and all the other uh, talking heads of all the networks. Has can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on Amazon and also on the free Amazon Fire TV channels at part of the Locked On Podcast Network where, of course, the motto is your team every day, my friends. All right, let's talk some BYU basketball. Now, uh, I got to say, watching uh, Illinois just absolutely demolish Duquesne just sticks another stake in your heart thinking what could have been for this BYU basketball team. I'm not saying that BYU basketball, if they would have found a way just to get past Duquesne, would have beaten Illinois. But it just makes you think, what could have been for this team? Because it's it's the madness of March. Those first-round matchups uh, traditionally are the toughest for a number of teams. Think of some of the scares that a lot of teams who have won national titles or made uh, final four runs, et cetera, have had in first-round games. You, they, those teams that you're going up against, like Duquesne, they've got literally nothing to lose. They're throwing everything they've got at you, and BYU fell victim to it. So it's, it's a disappointing loss, obviously. Still thinking about it, it is a disappointing, bitter end to BYU's basketball season, but the simple fact of the matter is they have to turn their attention to the offseason. The transfer portal is open. I'm expecting to start hearing news about BYU reaching out to transfer portal prospects. Uh, BYU is going to welcome in two new additions uh, via mission slash uh, high school. Uh, speaking of Colin Chandler coming home off of a mission in the relatively near future and Isaac Davis coming down from Hillcrest High School up there in Idaho. Looking forward to having both of those young men in the program, but uh, it appears on paper right now that it, with Spencer Johnson exiting, uh, obviously due to his eligibility, eligibility uh, running out and Jackson Robinson weighing his options. There could be a couple of slots for BYU to bring some transfer portal targets, but that brings me to the question. The, a number of you asked me about Jackson Robinson and it's a similar one. It's like, Jake, what is it ultimately going to take for Jackson Robinson to say yes or no to coming back to BYU? And what ultimately are the, is the timeline for him to make that decision? It's a great question. Like I said, uh, I got uh, Mark who on our locked on Cougars insider group, I had a couple of you DM me on Twitter. I had one other one on our Locked On Cougars Insider group. I also asked that question. I apologize. I'm not seeing the name right off the top of my head. But uh, the question is, is Jackson Robinson really considering coming back to BYU? I don't have any inside intel on that. I will be very upfront about that. I, I think that he is weighing his options truthfully. But as I said last week on the podcast, if I were advising Jackson Robinson, the way he played against Duquesne, he was literally, it felt like the only guy who showed up and played the way that you hope he would play on a national stage. I would strike while the iron is hot and chase the NBA and go and even if you're a second round pick, 
go and find uh, yourself a, a role in the NBA. There are very few guys out there like Jackson Robinson, six foot seven with a seven one wingspan, a wiry athlete who is just a, as adept shooting the three as well as getting to the rim. Those skill sets, along with his ability to defend his position as well as other positions, which is his length, is going to make him a very attractive NBA prospect. The other thing about this is he's still pretty young by NBA draft standards. He is considered to be a senior. He would be a sixth-year senior next year or a COVID senior if he were to come back to BYU. But he's just 21 years old, according to what I was reading about him. So at 21, having played as much college basketball as he has, uh, he is going to be a guy the NBA teams are going to look at and say, okay, we absolutely need to take a closer look at this kid and see if he's the right fit for us. When does he have to make that decision by Jake? Well, let's answer that question right now. The NBA early entry deadline is April 27th, 2024. So he's got a roughly a month based on what I understand to make his decision about if he's going to enter the NBA draft. Now, uh, you can, uh, once the season's over, which it is for BYU, according uh, to what I'm reading here, per NCAA and NBA rules, the first date to request an NBA undergraduate advisory committee evaluation uh, that is requested. You may enter the NBA draft and then sign an agreement with an NCAA certified agent but that has to happen after your season closes. So anytime between now and on April 27th, Jackson Robinson can make his decision and ultimately uh, put, put himself in the NBA draft. The other big part about this is, is if you go into the NBA draft, you want to be a part of the NBA draft combine, which is May 12th through May 19th in Chicago. And then ultimately, you um, if Jackson Robinson gets invited to that, you have the early entry withdrawal deadline, which uh, he could ultimately withdraw his name by going through about a month's worth of workouts by May 29th. So essentially, we got two months here of what Jackson Robinson could essentially, and this sounds bad, but hold BYU hostage about what his future is going to hold when it comes to his basketball career. I don't think he's the type of guy who is going to really uh, have a stranglehold on Mark Pope and say, yeah, 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 coach, I'll get back to you when I get back to you. I think he's going to make a decision, at least the way I understand it, pretty quickly and then move forward with it. Like I said, I am expecting slash advocating for him to go pro. I know that, that, that makes me probably persona non grata for some of you, but the way that he played this year, go make your money, go get a, uh, go play a uh, call that college, go play professional basketball and make some cheddar. I, I can't blame him one bit. I'm sure he's making plenty of good money in NIL, but NIL money pales in comparison to NBA money. Everybody let's be very clear about that. Even Euro league money uh, would dwarf a lot of what these guys make in NIL. And the other thing about this is a number of them have been in school for quite a while. Jackson Robinson has played four years of college basketball at this point and played his relative because he didn't play a ton early on in his career due to his transfers. But the thing is, eventually it gets old having to balance basketball with school. You want to specialize in one thing. A number of us, I'm yours truly included, no longer in school. I'm able to specialize. I do sports media. All of you out there, I think the vast majority of you, some of you are probably still students, but you have a dream if you're a student to become a professional in whatever it is. That's the other thing that Jackson Robinson has to weigh. Is if he goes professional, basketball is his career at that point. He's not having to deal with schoolwork and being in class and having to balance that with, with his practices and his rehab and all the different things he's got to go through or prehab, I guess the best way to call it. Uh, so I think Jackson Robinson is going to go pro. Uh, I was told, uh, this goes back two and a half months ago, that not to expect Jackson Robinson back at BYU, uh, but his thing kind of progressed throughout the season. And then when he got up there after the loss to Duquesne and said, I'm considering um, all my options, I'm considering coming back next year, making another run at this. If he does stun me as well as I think others out there and come back to BYU, awesome. He's going to absolutely bolster BYU's lineup, and he very well could be BYU's leading scorer next year. He's got that type of capability, and with uh, Spencer Johnson uh, exiting the program, that opens up a starting job for him to enter the starting lineup for this BYU basketball team. But I'm going to stick to my guns. I believe that he will be going pro, and he'll be looking at, at what he can get in the NBA draft, and I will wish him nothing but the best moving forward because I will forever have that lasting memory, that Duquesne loss. It's difficult loss, tough one to stomach for the BYU basketball program. But what Jackson Robinson showed in that game was exactly what I think NBA draft and now analysts, NBA scouts, front office executives, coaches on down the list were looking at saying, okay, that kid can ball. He can play with us any day. And I think that would be uh, something that will push him into the pro ranks. All right, we will wrap up today's edition of the podcast with some other notes on how other sports over the weekend did for BYU. Big wins for BYU men's volleyball, BYU baseball 
program continues to be a very, very capable team early on this season. And BYU softball got something they have not had in like 10 years. Uh, a big win for them. We'll talk about all that as we roll on right here on Locked On Cougars. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at LinkedIn. When you're hiring for your business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. It's as simple as that, my friends. That's why you guys need to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn is not just another job board, my friends. It is a vast network of more than a billion. You heard that right. Billion with a B, professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. It gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. And it's all that while making the process easy and intuitive. Hiring is super easy. We have that many quality candidates. In fact, 86% of Small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours of their job posting at LinkedIn. They know that small businesses are wearing many, many hats, might not have the adequate time or resources to hire. They want to help you guys out in that uh, in that circumstance. And they want you guys to join more than 2.5 million small businesses who have used LinkedIn for hiring their own uh, professionals. So post your job for free today at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post that job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Today's show is also brought to you by our friends over at Utah Community Credit Union. Now, Utah Community Credit Union has beefed up their uh, checking accounts. They've elevated them is probably the best term I should use by enhancing it with more benefits, more online protections, and uh, just more uh, of everything across the board. They have uh, also combined that with the most advanced and comprehensive mobile banking tools. Is elevated checking is a must-have financial product packed with lifestyle security and financial benefits to load, including free ATMs nationwide and exclusive discount on any UCCU auto, RV, or personal loan. Also, an extra 10% cash back on every purchase made with a UCCU Visa cashback credit card. And UCCU, uh, UCCU also has their credit score toolbox, a state-of-the-art set of tools to help you increase your uh, credit score and enhance your financial well-being as well. Elevated checking is free when you do any one of the following. Use your credit or debit card 15 times or more a month. Have a $500 direct monthly direct deposit of, or more or maintain an average daily balance of $1,500 in your account. Otherwise, UCCU and their elevated checking is just $6 a month to take advantage of all of these features and a whole lot more visit uccu.com to open an elevated checking account online today or stop by any branch to open that account in person it's all courtesy of your friends over at uccu love where you bank Thank you once again for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Appreciate all of you uh, for being with us. If you have not done so already, I would encourage you, highly encourage you guys to sign up for our Locked On Cougars Insider Group. Having a great time uh, passing along insider tidbits the minute I'm hearing them uh, to our Locked On Cougars Insiders. Uh, if you'd like to be a part of that, uh, hit the uh, link in the show notes below. 14-day free trial, $5 a month afterwards to have that access. And the best part is it's as simple as sending a text message. You guys will get updates from me via uh, text messages coming directly to your phone. You fire back with a text message. You're talking with me directly. It's a great way to interact with the show and also support it as well. So I'd encourage you guys, if you have the means to do so, please consider signing up. I'd love to have you guys be a part of it uh, as we move forward here. All right. So uh, Friday, uh, BYU, uh, over the weekend, I guess I should say, for BYU, there are a number of sports in action. So let's start off with the men's volleyball program. Uh, the number seven ranked Cougars were at, in Malibu to face off against number eight Pepperdine uh, and two back-to-back -back matches down there at Firestone Fieldhouse. And two epic five-set wins for the BYU men's volleyball program. They do make it easy on themselves. Let's just be very clear, clear about this this season with, with men's volleyball. They do not make it easy on themselves very often. But the nice part was they showed some gumption, some fight to win these two back-to-back -back matches on the road for BYU. Uh, the one on Saturday, 23-25, uh, 25-17, uh, 21-25, 25-19, and 15-7. So they finished off in the fifth set with a flourish. A nice big win for BYU on the road. And the nice part is this BYU team seems to be getting better as the season goes along here. Now, are they the are they the elite team that you'd like them to be? Probably not quite yet, and I would say they're, they're absolutely not, but the nice part is they're building in the season, and they've played a number of high-level uh, teams. You all know that they've played number seven Stanford, number four U, uh, UCLA, number two Grand Canyon, number seven UC Irvine. Like They've played a lot of really good teams, but they're going to have a relative, uh, uh, I guess, down a part of the, of the slate, I guess, coming up here. Uh, it's the final uh, regular season matches upcoming. They have four left, so they have two this weekend, which are going to be the final two home uh, matches of the season. Concordia University of Irvine in California comes to Provo to the Smith Fieldhouse. That's Friday and Saturday night, and then BYU will finish up the regular season at USC. 
the following weekend, uh, but it's a big opportunity for BYU volleyball. I, I'm really liking uh, when I've had a chance to watch them this season. Just they've been getting better as the season goes along, and that's a positive sign uh, for this BYU volleyball program as they continue to build. Now, are they going to break that uh, that uh, title drought that BYU has been enduring for 20 years now? Eh, probably not looking likely this season, but hey. You get into the postseason and anything can happen at that point. And that's kind of kind of be the goal right now for them. Now, uh, good news also for BYU women's gymnastics. They took home a third place finish with a final score of 197.050 in their first ever Big 12 championship. It's a good showing for BYU uh, women's gymnastics as, as they headed to the Big 12 championships. Number one ranked Oklahoma won the conference title, as you might expect. Number eight, Denver uh, took home second place. But then BYU uh, rounded out the top three with Iowa State and West Virginia just behind them so a solid showing uh for byu and uh congratulations to guard young squad they will be awaiting uh postseason birth which i'm expecting will be coming uh, relatively quickly and then the final two notes i got for you guys is byu baseball uh they continue to tread water in the big 12 that's i think is all we can ask for this byu baseball team right now they're 11 and 10 on the season they lost the series against uh, uh texas tech over the weekend uh, they won one they lost two but the nice part is is byu sitting at four and five in conference right now they're right in the middle the pack in the big 12 i remember thinking before the season uh, started i'm like okay it's gonna be a very very long year for byu baseball and yes there's still time for the quote-unquote wheels to come off here but the nice part is byu is hanging in there and they've had a really really uh, solid showing so far they're above 500 11 and 10 is nothing to sniff at and they're back in action tonight actually as they welcome a uvu uh to miller ballpark it's a big opportunity for byu to get across a town win uh, it's being uh, broadcast on uh, Big 12 now on ESPN Plus if you want to watch it streaming or if you want to get out there and watch it, uh, BYU uh, Radio will also have a radio call. But you can get out to Miller Park and enjoy that. I'm hoping the weather will cooperate. We'll see what happens on that front. Uh, and then also BYU softball. Uh, not necessarily having the greatest uh, start to the year in terms of the conference plays. They're just 2-7 and seven in conference. They're 17-12 and 12 overall. But they got something they have not gotten in 10 years uh, over the weekend. And that is a win over over a top five team. BYU welcomed a number four Oklahoma State uh, to Gail Miller Field over the weekend. And BYU on Friday night beat the, uh, beat the not the Sooners, the Cowboys 11 to eight. Once again, like I said, 10 years uh, since their last top five upset, they got one over Oklahoma State. Now Oklahoma State took two of the three other games, winning three, two on Thursday, and then winning the series finale 10 to two uh, on Saturday. But it's a nice showing for Gordon Eakins' squad. This is not going to be an easy year in softball. In some ways, softball is more up against it than BYU baseball is, just with the caliber of programs in the Big 12 Conference. But uh, it's good to see BYU softball doing their thing out there. Now, uh, they have a chance, obviously, to back bounce back as they will head tomorrow down to Utah Tech for a one-off. it will be a 4 o'clock Mountain Time start. It'll be on ESPN+. Plus. If you want to tune into that, I'll have more updates uh, for you guys on that game tomorrow uh, with anything. And then they're back at home this weekend. Welcome. Coming fellow a Big 12 newcomer, Houston, uh, to Gail Miller Field for a three-game uh, series Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So there you go. That's what I got for you guys on this Monday edition of the podcast. I want to thank you guys once again for your continued support of the venture. It really does mean the world to me. I uh, A couple of you uh, uh, commented that, hey, the beard looks just as good in person as it does on, on camera. So uh, it was really fun to be out of that alumni game. And I can't thank you all y'all who uh, said uh, said nice things about the podcast. I actually found out there are, wow. Let's just put it this way. I'm a little more nervous uh, than I have been before because there are a lot of former Cougars, like former BYU football players who are watching and or listening to this podcast than I ever expected. And that was uh, talking with some of the guys after that alumni game. They're like, yeah, Jake, I watch your podcast. I'm like, you do? Why? But hey, it's cool all the same. I appreciate it. It's an, an I guess it's an endorsement. We'll we'll take it as that. But I uh, want to thank you all once again for your support of the podcast. Like I said, uh, tomorrow we'll be back out at BYU football practice. Also on tomorrow's show, a little bit of a tease ahead. I have ha I've had an interview I did with Kevin Gilbride uh, that we will get to you guys on tomorrow's show. And I've also got one in the can with Caleb Etienne as well. Uh, we'll have both of those throughout the week, and obviously anything else we collect throughout the week from BYU football practice, we will utilize as well. And also planning on catching up with. Connor Pay at some point. Uh, I'm thinking uh, next week is kind of a, a spring camp spring camp recap, uh, but we'll see what his schedule looks like. Maybe we'll push that up to sometime this week if everything uh, works out. But nonetheless, thank you for making Locked On Cougars your first listen of the day. Thank you to all of you who are everydayers as well and appreciate all the support of the podcast as always. And we'll be back with you guys again tomorrow right here.
Unlocked on Cougars 